textbook. Intelligent design means, it says, that various forms of life began abruptly through an intelligent agency with their distinctive features already intact, fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers, beaks and wings, etc. Okay. So uh, you can sort of see within this uh, some of the elements that things arose sort of as they are. So it's a rejection of evolution. Uh, and it's through some intelligent agency. And they'll often point out, look, there's no mention of God here. Uh, there's no direct appeal to, uh, to the Bible. Right? Why would you say that this is, uh, is creationism or has anything to do with that? Now, one of the things that was very nice about the trial and, and you're able to do in a trial setting is um, make use of the process of discovery and subpoena. And one of the things that we wound up doing was finding out a little bit about the history of the book of Pandas and People. And we're able to actually subpoena earlier drafts of that textbook and look at the manuscripts. So let's take a look now at uh, a comparison of this, which is what I just read in the published version, to one of the earlier manuscripts. And here is the way we see in the earlier manuscript. Creation means that the various forms of life began abruptly through the agency of an intelligent creator with their distinctive features already intact, fish with fins and scales, birds with feathers and beaks and wings, etc. Okay, So what had happened here, right? Uh, you had the very same definition, but instead of intelligent design, intelligent agency, you had creation, creator. Right? They'd taken out the one and put in the other language, but kept the content the same. Now, this is just one example, but it was pervasive. And one could see not just this in one draft, but we were able to subpoena actually a whole series of drafts, uh, which went back uh, to the early 80s. Under a different title, they changed titles as they went along. Early it was called Creation Biology, and then they called it Biology and Creation, and then Biology and Origins, and finally the name that was published under Pandas and People. Uh, and in tracking the use of terminology in these earlier drafts, a very interesting pattern arose. Right? If you take a look at the two lines in the graph, the word count on terminology that says creation, creationism, creationist, uh, is tracked in red, and in those early drafts, you see that uh, as the dominant one, and really nothing at all with regard to the term intelligent design and so on. Uh, and then, uh, suddenly, right at this point, a total switch. Okay, and just as in the example that I showed you, every place that had had creationism, we then had intelligent design. Creationist was changed to intelligent design proponent. Okay? So here you have a very nice switch of terminology uh, in really just a search and replace kind of way. Um, and what was it that happened? What, what was at that, um, that switch there? If you take a look, that's happened in the middle of 1987. So the early 1987 version has the creationist language. The version, the manuscript at the end of 87 has the intelligent design language. So what happened in between there? That's the point where the Supreme Court issued a ruling against creation science and creationism saying that teaching it in the schools is unconstitutional. Okay? Uh, this was a, a, a case in Louisiana that went all the way up to the US Supreme Court. And there you had a ruling. And you can just sort of see at the, uh, at the meeting that they must have had, hmm, the Supreme Court has just ruled that we're unconstitutional. What should we do about that? And someone said, hmm, well, maybe we should change the name. <laughs> And literally, it seemed as though it was, a, it was a word processor kind of change. And let me just show you uh, one of the nice examples of that. Um, here's a, a scan from one of those earlier drafts where the term was creationists. And as I said, at the, in the published version, it was intelligent design proponents. But in the second last of, of, the, of the drafts before the published version, uh, this form was found. Can you see it? C design proponent cysts. Okay. It's it's the missing link. Okay. Uh, this this is an example that shows you really the transitional form <laughs> between yes transitional forms do exist uh, between creationism and uh, and intelligent design. So this was something that uh, was just very clear uh, in the case. There was lots of evidence that 
uh, we were able to present, uh, but clearly a, a smoking gun here uh, with regard to that claim. Now, how about this claim, that, that intelligence design isn't religion, um, that it's not religious? Here's William Dembski uh, making a claim of this sort. Right? He says, intelligent design is a strictly scientific theory devoid of uh, religious commitments. And again, if you look at op-ed pieces and things that they say in, in public forums, this will be something that, that's very common in what they say. But if you're familiar with their literature and what they say in other forums, uh, you'll see that that's not really consistent. So here's William Dembski speaking again, uh, but to a different audience, an audience of, of supporters, and here's what he says. He says, the world is a mirror representing the divine life. The mechanical philosophy was ever blind to this fact. Intelligent design, on the other hand, readily embraces the sacramental nature of physical reality. Indeed, intelligent design is just the logos theology of John's gospel restated in the idiom of information theory. So here it's very clear that this is a religiously based, in fact, a, based in a particular uh, religion. And there are lots and lots of such examples. And what I want to do is just give you a, just a, a sampling of some of these things to show um, the religious basis of this. Here's a, a quote from uh, Philip Johnson. Uh, he's the uh, now retired uh, law professor who's really credited with organizing the intelligent design movement. Uh, and here's what he uh, has written about this. My colleagues and I, uh, of, of the intelligent design movement, my colleagues and I speak of theistic realism, or sometimes mere creation, as the defining concept of our movement. This means we affirm that God is objectively real as creator, that the reality of God is tangibly recorded in evidence accessible to science, particularly in biology. Okay, so. Uh, this is the defining concept, so it's really quite disingenuous to say that there are no religious commitments. This is base, uh, basic to it. Elsewhere, Johnson said, you know, either the gospel of Christ is the centerpiece of the new order or it's nothing. Okay? So really, this, this is at base uh, a religious position. Uh, one of the things that came out uh, in the trial was uh, a leaked document from the Discovery Institute. Uh, essentially an internal fundraising document that laid out a strategic plan for how they were going to get their view into the schools. So this is from the preamble to that, uh, talking about what they see as uh, the social, um, terrible social consequences of materialism, the scientific uh, worldview of, of materialism. They say it's been devastating. Um, what are some of the social consequences that they're talking about here, the, the social evils? Um, things like abortion, homosexuality, uh, divorce, these are the, the standard sorts of things. Uh, this is from the Discovery Institute, which also has uh, very much of a, a laissez-faire pro-capitalist uh, view. And so they also mention uh, product liability laws uh, as one of the evil consequences <laughs> of this. Uh, and, and so they say, we have to defeat it. We have to defeat materialism and cut it off at the source. The source, they say, is scientific materialism. So this is an attack against science as a whole. Right? Design theory, they say, promises to reverse the stifling dominance of the materialist worldview and to replace it with a science consonant with Christian and theistic convictions. So here in this internal document, it becomes very clear again um, the uh, the religious nature of their view. And one could go on and on and on. I'll just mention one recent example uh, that uh, you may have seen. Uh, uh, Ann Coulter, in her new book, Godless, um, uh, spends almost a third of the book uh, attacking evolution and promoting intelligent design. That's a, that's a large part of this that didn't really get too much play in the, in the press, uh, mostly her, her other statements uh, about the 9-11 the widows uh, was, was what got play. Uh, but really her understanding of evolution was really on a par with her understanding of the, the grief of these, of these women. Um, and you can see the way in which he's putting it forward. Evolution, the claim is, is godless. We need to replace this with uh, intelligent design. Now it's interesting, right? It wasn't just uh, Coulter alone. Where did she get some of this? Well, it turns out she got it from uh, the Intelligent Design Group. Here's William Dembski uh, shortly after the publication and his blog saying, I'm happy to report that I was in constant correspondence with Anne uh, regarding her chapters on Darwinism. Indeed, I take responsibility for any errors in those chapters. And the big smiley face there. So, you know, he was, he was pretty pleased. He said, you know, Ann Coulter is going to promote our mov movement more than, uh, than anyone else. I actually think that it's, it's probably more a sign of, of how low the, this has sunk if, if Ann Coulter is